Bike helmets do not last forever. If you look at the safety manual or indeed inside the box, you will see that you need to replace them in the event of an accident or regardless, just every few years which a lot of people do not do. People do not replace their bike helmets often enough. And I completely sympathize with that. It can be incredibly frustrating to have to throw something in the bin when to all intents and purposes, it looks absolutely fine. So with that question at the forefront of our minds, I thought I'd take advantage of our long time relationship with our friends at Cask and actually ask them why you do actually need to replace your helmet every few years. And then perhaps most importantly, how can we better look after our helmets in order to try and extend their lifespans? Most bike helmets are made out of EPS, which is the kind of polystyrene substance on the inside here. Cheap ones and expensive ones alike. And it is currently the best material available with which to make bike helmets out of. However, it does have its limitations. Firstly, what you need to know is that actually it's the EPS that absorbs the energy of the impact in the event of a crash. But according to Cask, and this was completely new to me, there is a linear relationship between the thickness of the EPS at the point of impact and its ability to absorb energy, which is fine until you start looking at all the little dents over your helmet. Because just a one millimeter deep dent on a 20 millimeter thick section of EPS will mean that it will have lost 5% of its ability to absorb impact. It of course depends on where the dent is and the direction of the impact, but I think that's kind of freaky, especially when you then start to look at the helmet in this newfound light. So point number one about trying to make your helmet last longer is actually to protect it from wear and tear, bumps and knocks. So that means particularly, I think, when storing it and also transporting it. Bearing in mind what we've just learned about EPS, what about larger impacts then, like actually falling off your bike or dropping your helmet from a height? Well, one of the other things we need to know about EPS is that damage can actually be completely invisible. So Cask said that in testing over the years, they've actually witnessed a helmet failing what's called the chin strap test as a result of invisible cracks in the shell that were sustained through a previous impact test, which is actually, you'll be pleased to hear, a standard testing procedure. So what it means to you and I, therefore, is that actually you can't always tell whether your helmet is damaged in the first place. But also what it means in terms of prolonging the lifespan of your helmet is that you need to prevent dropping it. Of course, you can't necessarily help when you do or do not fall off your bike. But if you don't leave your helmet in perilous positions on the edges of tables or looped over the end of your handlebars, then there's less likelihood of it dropping anywhere. Apparently, it's actually standard advice for motorcyclists to always leave their helmets on the floor. And it kind of sounds like good advice if you ask me. One of the other limitations of EPS is its temperature resistance. We don't need to get too stressed about it because in order for it to get its little safety sticker, which you might not be too surprised to see is completely faded through sweat on my helmet, but in order to get it, your helmet would have had to have undergone a number of safety tests, a number of which will be at temperature extremes, so about minus 30 and plus 50 degrees C, which is reassuring. But have you ever thought about just how hot the inside of your car might get in full sun because that could well exceed quite comfortably 50 degrees centigrade, at which point you may well over time start damaging the structure of the helmet. So bear that in mind because if you want to maximize the lifespan of your helmet, you should keep it away from those temperature extremes. Another side effect of leaving your helmet in your car or on a windowsill is the effect of UV radiation because UV can actually damage EPS by making the outer layers more brittle, which is another very good reason why we have hard shells covering the delicate EPS. But if you were to leave your helmet upside down in full sun, then you are exposing the EPS to the direct UV radiation. So with that in mind, if you wanna make your helmet last longer, store it away from direct sunlight. 
Lastly, EPS can be damaged by chemicals. Now, I'm not just talking about like toxic waste here. I'm talking about the kind of stuff that you will use on or around your bike day to day. So like degreasers or lubricant, even Vaseline can actually degrade over time the EPS. So it's for that reason actually that manufacturers will generally recommend that you only clean bike helmets with water. And if you are worried therefore about a stinky helmet, which is a legitimate concern, I'll grant you, then just remove the pads before washing them more thoroughly with soap. Much of the advice in this video will hopefully seem like common sense. Some of it may well seem like I'm being a bit too cautious, but I was actually quite shocked when I learned about just what may or may not affect the integrity of a helmet. And yet, I can share your frustrations if you feel like you're replacing a product that hasn't actually yet had to do anything that it was necessarily designed to do, i.e. protect your safety. But do bear in mind, like I said at the beginning, that EPS is currently the best material the industry's found from which to make lightweight ventilated bike helmets from. Although, Cask have actually said that they always look into new designs and new materials. So, watch this space, I guess. And in the meantime, if you have had a crash and you're worried about the integrity of your helmet, then do bear in mind that most manufacturers will have some kind of crash replacement policy. I think Cask will offer a discount of between about 30 and 50% off the price of a new one, depending on what model you choose. So, definitely worth remembering that. Now, Make sure you subscribe to GCN before leaving this video. To do so, just click on the globe. And if you want to watch a couple more videos right now, then there's an interesting one up there about the safety standards of helmets, how they're tested, or indeed for seven magnificent ways to hang your helmets, which may or may not contravene some of the advice contained in this video, but Matt and Dan are quite rebellious in nature. And that one is just over there.